dear students how are you all hope you all are good today we are going to continue with the theme space and shape of mathematics if you remember we have already covered few topics from this theme in our previous session let's do a small recap of all that we have learned we learned about the concept of inside outside big and small then we learned what is meant by the terms top bottom near far lastly you all learned about above and below now take a look children what do you see lots and lots of shapes isn't it children we live in a world full of shapes the world around us is full of objects and things of various different shapes do you recognize these shapes in different objects or things around you i am sure you do what are the most common shapes that we see around can you name some of these shapes so tell me what do we call a closed shape which has three sides a triangle isn't it you can see several triangle shapes object here a cracker a geometry box set square a road sign and a hanger can you see the triangle shape as a common feature in all of these now what is the shape with four equal sides called a square isn't it several square shape objects are visible to you a chess board a wall clock a carrom board and a wall painting again the common thing in all these objects is the square shape and four equal sides in them right children now what is the shape with four sides in which the two opposite sides are equal called it's called a rectangle notice the different objects the envelope the calculator the chocolate and the 100 rupee note all of these are shaped in same way with four equal and opposite sides okay and what about a closed shape which has no size at all but is round all over what is it called that will be called a circle you see circle shaped objects here all have a common shape isn't it moving on let me take you to a fair which is going on in my city isn't it fun going to the fair can you see differently shaped objects in the fair yes can you spot out the triangles circles and rectangle shaped things in there try to identify the shapes in the picture for yourself now you see two kids are in the park on a seesaw can you find shapes in there too well i can see a triangle a rectangle and round faces of the kid next we see a living room with different shaped objects in the room there are balls painting on the wall a couch a tripod a camera all these objects have a specific shape isn't it a tripod is triangular in shape the painting is rectangular the camera has square shape the ball is circular and so on lastly you see a classroom in the classroom try to notice the different objects with different shapes some objects are rectangular some are circular so you get an idea about how the places around us is full of differently shaped objects now children you are quite aware about the shapes can you identify and name these ones also let us observe them one by one first shape has three sides and the figure is closed can we call it a triangle yes it is a triangle next we have another three sided shape which is closed but wait this looks little different from the first shape and it is too big can there be a different form of triangle or should all the triangles look the same 
just like the first one that we saw. So, children there can be different shapes and sizes of a triangle like you see two different types of triangle in front of you. Only condition is that the figure must be closed on all sides. Now, let us look at the third shape. Although the shape has three sides, but the three lines are not forming a closed figure. So, what do you think? Can we call this a triangle or not? No, this is not a triangle as this is not a closed figure. Although it has three sides, but it is an open figure. For a shape to be a triangle, it must be a closed space with three lines. So, next image has four sides. So, what do you think? Can it be called a rectangle or is it not a rectangle? No, it is not a rectangle as the figure is open again. So, this cannot be called a rectangle. Have you seen this last shape? This has five sides and it is a closed figure. We call it a pentagon. Okay, students, let us meet two friends now, Rohan and Tina. They are playing together. They have collected some objects from their surroundings. Now, they want to sort the objects into two boxes. You can see a pink box and a yellow box. The pink box has a dice already and the yellow box has a ball in it. Looks like Tina and Rohan have decided already on the type of the shape of objects they want to place in their boxes. So, shall we help them to sort the objects on the basis of their shapes? Let us start with the balloon. Where shall we place the balloon? In the pink box or the yellow box? Shouldn't it go in the yellow box with the ball children? Can you think of the reason why in the yellow box? Okay. It is because the shape of the balloon matches the shape of the ball. Both are round and have curved surfaces. Next is the start toy box. Shouldn't it be placed in the pink box as its shape is similar to the dais which is already in the box. Can you find how these two are similar? These two objects are flat on all sides and not round. Did you notice? Where do we place the tomato now? Can I give it to Tina to put it in the yellow box as the tomato shape is perfectly matching with the shape of the ball. Both have curved surfaces and no corners. Right students? Now let us find the right box for the football. I will again give it to Tina. What do you say children? Can I give it to her? Yes, can be given to her, right. Last object is a chalk box. Where will it go? It will go in the pink box to Rohan. And so, the sorting is done. Wait, do you notice a water bottle with Tina? Hmm, if we want to give it a place in the pink or blue box, where do you think should it be placed? Can it be placed in the pink box where only objects with flat faces are put? Or should it go in the blue box where objects with curved surfaces are placed? You may discuss this with your friends and try to find out the answer to it. Ok, so dear learners, after the small activity, now it is time for a story. Are you excited to listen to an interesting story? Okay, so let's start the story. The title of the story is Wise Grandmother. Once there lived a lamb in a jungle. One day he was going to see his grandmother. On the way to his grandmother's house, he met a wolf. The wolf said, I am going to eat you. The terrified lamb said, please let me go. I am going to meet my grandmother. I really want to see her. You can eat me when I return. The wolf said, 
Okay, you may go now. I will wait for you. Now, after meeting his grandmother, when the lamb was about to return, he told his grandmother about the wolf. The grandmother gave him an idea. She said, go and hide yourself in a dholak. I will do the rest. And so he did. The grandmother then rolled the dholak down the road. The dholak started rolling and rolling down the road at a fast speed. The lamb saw the wolf was waiting for him on the road. The wolf asked, did you see a lamb coming this way? No, said the lamb from inside the dholak. Hearing this, the wolf grew suspicious and started running behind the rolling dholak. But before the wolf could catch him, the lamb reached home and was thankful to his grandmother. Did you see how the idea of rolling down the road saved the life of the little lamb? I hope you enjoyed the story, children. Now I want to ask you a question. What would have happened if the lamb hid himself in a box instead of a dholak? Would the box also roll down the road just like the dholak? The thing is, children, not all the objects roll. And the objects which do not roll, they slide. So the box would slide down the road. Now let's try to understand why some of the objects roll and others slide. To understand this concept, you must know that any object with a flat surface slides and the object with round shape and curved surface rolls. Have you ever tried rolling or sliding objects on a surface? Let's try doing it using a few objects. So, I have got few objects with me. Let us first start making an incline. So, here we have an incline. Let us see what will this ball do when it goes down the incline. So, you see, the ball is rolling like anything. It is because the surface is curved and round throughout. Next, let us take this book. Let's see what happens when it goes down the incline. Oh, it is not rolling. Yes, it's sliding, isn't it? Because it has flat surface. Next, we have this small box shaped object. It is sliding, isn't it? It is sliding. Next, we have a pomegranate. Let's see what the pomegranate does. It is rolling. So, the pomegranate rolls. Next, we have a marker. Let's see what does it do. It is rolling. Oh no, just now it slide. Can you identify which of the following objects in the shown image will roll or slide? We just saw the ball rolling, so the ball rolls. Next, we have a ruler or you call it a scale. It will slide due to its flat surface. What about the toy box? What do you think? Yes, dear children, it would slide down the incline. Now, we have a briefcase. It will again slide down. Now, there is a bottle of water. It can both roll and slide. You can try doing it at your home also. Same is for the drum. If we push it down with its curved surface touching the ground, it will roll. If we push it down from its flat surface, then it will slide. Children, I want you to think if there are any more objects which can both roll and slide. So, you see there are objects which can both roll as well as slide. Observe smartly and you can get to identify such objects around you. Isn't that amazing fact to know children? So, with that our session is coming to its end and it's time to summarize all that we learned today. We learned that the world around is made up of different shaped objects. We learned how can we identify 
classify and sort the shapes by observing their physical characteristics and features. Now we can use this knowledge to identify and sort different groups of objects. Next we learnt about the concept of rolling and sliding. Now we can observe and differentiate between the rolling and sliding objects. Before going, I want you all to help the younger brother of Tina. Actually, he saw her sister playing and sorting objects. Seeing her sister do that, he also collected some objects from the home and now he wants to sort them in different groups just like his sister. Can you help him to classify the objects into different groups based on their shape? I am sure you can do the task easily without any help. Next he needs some help with a picture that her sister Tina made. You can see the picture. He observed the picture and saw that there are so many rectangles in this picture. So now he wants to find out the total number of rectangles in the given shape. He noticed that the rectangles are of different sizes. He wants to find out how many rectangles are there in all which are of different sizes. You understand he wants to find the number of differently sized rectangles. Also, he has one more very important thing bothering him. Do you also see a square in the left corner of the picture? He wants to know if he can count it as a rectangle or not. What do you think children? Is square a rectangle or not? Find an answer to this question by taking opinion of your friends. You may also discuss it with your parents and teachers. So put your thinking caps on children and find the answer to the question using your reasoning power. With this, we come to an end of our session children. I am sure you all had a great time learning today. Thank you all children. Stay safe and stay happy.